Hi everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel. I'm very happy you're here to join me today and welcome to this week's episode of Behind the Scenes. Now this is our third edition of some of the best artists out there online that you should get to know. Uh, I already have two out already, one of which was a bit of a general one, the second one which was focused more on traditional and today we're coming back to digital painters. And I owe it to this amazing guy to put this guy at the front of the list. And that is Ross Draws. Ross Tran is his actual name. But his YouTube channel is Ross Draws. And the reason I want to draw attention to this guy is because of the amazing work this guy puts into his YouTube channel to really be a badass entertainer. The production value of his videos is off the chart. I remember my friend Tyler Edling getting in touch with me on Facebook a little while back. And he said, Adam, you gotta check this guy's channel out. He mentioned him about a year ago and we were both flipping out over his channel because he just puts so much love and effort into the work that he does, the everything that he does on his channel, the editing, the comedy, the collaborations that he does are amazing, are absolutely amazing. Whether or not you're actually an artist, you're still gonna love going on his channel and checking out his stuff. Now, to give you a little bit more of an idea of the artist himself, he's an absolutely amazing artist who has worked on some really amazing professional projects, but I would put him more into the independent artist type of thing. You can really tell that his heart is on his own personal projects. And one of them in particular that I only discovered just a few days ago is his book, Nima, which I didn't even know he put out. You can go and check it out. You're gonna see on the screen the page and everything like that where you can go and pick up the book for yourself, but I am absolutely picking up a copy of this book. Number one, because I'm an amazing fan of his art, but number two, just to support him artistically. The guy puts so much out there for everybody else that I feel like we all owe it to him to show us our support in return and help to support the amazing project that he's working at that in and of itself, the art is beautiful enough that it merits you picking up a copy for yourself anyways. And you'll see when you check it out. Now, as far as his art goes, he's very, very anime influenced, but has a very unique, very iconic style. I know that whenever I go online, if I see art by him, I immediately recognize him. His line style, his color style, his posing, the charm of his characters is something that I really love and I really appreciate. And I'd love to find out his technique. He's got a very unique look and feel. It's got a very traditional feel to his work, even though he's doing everything digitally. He does a lot of amazing kind of redesigns and stuff like that of some very popular iconic characters from animated films to video games, so on and so forth. He also does some amazing collaborations with artists like Anthony Jones, for instance. And, and most of all, most important, is he's got the most absolutely adorable Shiba Inu dog named Milo, who I might add can breathe fire and can draw just as good as Ross as far as I've seen. So, I mean, if I can get my way this year, I want his subscriber list to triple this year alone. Go hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Go buy his book if you haven't already. He's a guy that deserves a lot of love and support and he's absolutely the most entertaining guy on earth to watch. So go check it out. Now, the next artist on my list is none other than Stanley Law better known as Art Germ online. And he's an artist based in Hong Kong who's been working in the industry for as long as I can remember. And he's been somewhat of a household name in my home for a long time. I talk about him quite a bit. Now, one of the reasons why I love his YouTube channel isn't only just to watch his countless hours of art streaming. One of the things that I love about Stanley Law's work is the fact that he's extremely refined and extremely professional. And his technique, his digital technique to me takes digital painting and drawing to a whole new level. Although I would put him not so much in the category of digital painter, I would naturally put him more in the category of comic book artist, because that's what he does primarily. So much so that he's actually the co-founder of Imaginary Friends Studios in Hong Kong, if I'm not mistaken. A studio which has become a very big name in the comic book industry. He's, they've done work for studios like Capcom, for DC Comics, for Marvel, and a lot more. This, this is a studio that really gets around. Now, although there aren't a lot of instructional videos on his YouTube channel per se, the ones that he does have are absolutely amazing because, because they tackle issues that a lot of other digital painters online aren't even aware have a solution to. What I find I gain from watching his channel is, and watching his technique is his attention to perfectionism, his incredibly refined, meticulous polish to his work. 
I find that being around very skilled, very patient artists who are capable of adding that extra level of polish to the work really help to kind of center me and say, no, Adam, you can do better. You can do better. Watching artists like him remind me on a daily basis to slow myself down and focus more on quality. Focus on quality, focus on quality. He's the kind of artist that really does have that kind of an influence on me. Now, last but not least, he's an artist that you should be following because he does a lot of conferences worldwide. He travels all over the world doing conferences, teaching his techniques and stuff like that. So it's definitely worth going on his site, checking the dates and the locations of where he's gonna be next because he might very well end up in your city somewhere. So there's a lot to appreciate with his work. There's a lot to learn from, so go and check it out. Now, the next artist on my list is considered probably one of the digital painting industry's most popular artists worldwide, and that is Feng Zhu. Now, the thing I wanna say about Feng Zhu right out of the gate is I've been following him for years. I absolutely love what he does, but there's a very important distinction to be made about his particular approach that he makes very clear himself on his channel. There are artists in the romantic sense of the word. There are designers, more technical artists in that sense. And Feng Zhu very clearly puts himself in the category of designer in the sense that he regards what he does as a job. He gets up, he has certain tasks he needs to fulfill, he needs to do so in an efficient manner, he knows how to execute them extremely well, perform his duty, but when he gets home at the end of the day, he forgets about it. He's not the type of person who thinks and lives and breathes art 24 hours a day. Now you might take this as me hitting on his particular approach towards his career and comparing it to different styles of art. That couldn't be further from the truth. I find that in the artistic industry, we need balance. I find that there are many very romanticized artists that are creative geniuses and, and dabble more into these creative synapses we make between different facets of the world around us and bring them together to create these beautiful imaginary worlds, yet struggle when it comes to efficiency, when it comes to working professionally, what things we need to undertake in order to perform our job well. There's other artists that are entirely efficient but really struggle creatively. So there's certain artists that are very good at executing a mandate. They have a task they're expected to fulfill, they fulfill it. Yet, when it comes to creative thought, that's where they really don't know where to go with themselves. So there's balance that needs to come on both sides. Now, I actually have a podcast that I put out on my channel a few years ago that you can go and check out for yourself. It discusses the differences between the masculine and the feminine brain. Feng Zhu is a classic example of the masculine side of the brain. He's tactical. He's strategic. He knows how to execute work very quickly, very efficiently, and very acceptably. <laughs> he knows how to produce beautiful designs very quickly, and that's one of the reasons why he gets hired a lot for many of these big high-end jobs. Now, as far as the content on his YouTube channel is concerned, I don't think I have enough muscle stamina to scroll long enough to get through all of it. He's been producing videos for years, high quality videos where he talks his way through different types of things. You may find yourself incredibly inspired by what he does and incredibly motivated by what he does. Or if you're more of the artistic side of the brain, you might find a little bit cold and discouraging. Do be aware that he plays a very specific role in the industry and this is one of the things that makes him so popular. Now with that said, as an instructor, he also has the FZD School of Design, Feng Zhu School of Design. As far as I know so far, please correct me down below if I'm wrong, but his school is only available in Singapore. It's an in-house school where you have to actually go to Singapore to take a course with him. And I don't know if he teaches in different languages. I haven't really checked it out. He has that school online. It's definitely worth to check it out. And if you're in Singapore for any length of time or around the area where traveling isn't such an issue for you, then it might be something really worth checking out. So you have an endless library of entertainment and inspiration waiting for you at your fingertips. Go and subscribe. All right, the next artist on my list possesses a skill that I know 99% of you watching right now wish you had yourself. And that's that combination between animation style art and fantasy art, uh, which combines together to create what a lot of us popularly refer to as wow style art or World of Warcraft style stuff. And this is none other than Trent Kanyuga, the incredible fantasy artist. Right out of the gate when you see his work, you can see it's very iconic of this classical animation style of art. Very bold colors and very bold designs. The cool thing about him is he's a Blizzard artist who's really nailed this particular style. He's really met this crossroads of art beautifully and shares it all online on YouTube. He's got countless, countless hours of videos where he demonstrates and narrates his way through the production of tons of different pieces of art. He just 
does it all online, which is something that to us artists is incredibly valuable, isn't it? He's worked on World of Warcraft, he's worked on Diablo 3, he's worked on League of Legends, he's worked more recently on Overwatch. I mean, pretty much every game that I've played for the last 10 years, I've been big into that whole Blizzard ecosystem as far as that goes. He's a guy who's where a lot of artists out there want to be, and he is not afraid to share every bit of knowledge and experience that he's got. He's very candid with his opinions. Another thing that Trent does that I really, really love is a lot of Q and A's. A lot of artists really need to hear that feedback from artists who can do what Trent does, the way he does it. He's not the type of guy who says, well, I'm up here and you're down there and this is what you need to be a super pro like me. And you're just another one of the million peons out there trying to get to where I am. No. He's one-on-one -on -one with his audience. He says, this is what I did to get where I am. This is what you need to do. This is how I feel about this. And he's very, very honest. And I love that about him. Now, if you're an employer looking for a badass artist, you can go and check out Aquatic Moon. That's the studio that he works under to produce a lot of the stuff as well. And it should give you artists out there a very good example of the type of work that employers look for. So. Trent Kanyuga has got stuff all over the internet. He's got his YouTube videos. He's got his Q and A's. He's got his book. He's got his gum roads. Subscribe, show him some love, go check it out. All right. The next artist on my list has been at the YouTube game for over seven years. He's been at this for a long, long time. And I think with all of the artists that we've been discussing with these different styles of artists, I think we were well overdue for a children's book illustrator. And the next artist on my list, Will Terry, is very well versed in this particular field. And what's incredibly valuable to you is the amount of experience he has working in this industry, working on countless published books. Not only that, but his particular style, his particular rendering is pretty special. What I've seen him do with digital painting how he's capable of capturing a very traditional style in his digital renderings is remarkable. I think it's absolutely beautiful what this guy does. What's so beneficial to you is that it's demonstrating that digital painting doesn't need to be a one trick pony. A lot of digital painters that I see out there kind of follow the same processes. They follow the same techniques all the time. But with Will Terry, he shows you that you can achieve very different looking results just by approaching your trade differently. And he puts a lot of work into his renderings. I think in one of his videos, he describes the process of creating a single character and that it can take him well over 10 hours to produce this single character. So a lot of love and a lot of care goes into his character creations. Now, another thing that you're gonna get a lot of on his YouTube channel, and by a lot, I mean a lot, is he has a lot of art vlogs, like my art talks, for instance, countless art talks, where he shares his experience on the industry, covering a multitude of different subjects. And because he's more of a soft-spoken artist, I find he's really nice to listen to over long periods of time. He's not somebody who exhausts your brain because he's too high energy. I can listen to him in pain and just absorb his advice and listen to his voice over hours as I'm just moving ahead through my own works of art or working on my own projects. But he's got so much knowledge and experience in the industry that you really owe it to yourself to listen to him because you can learn tons of very valuable things. He's really sharing all of the knowledge he's got. So it's definitely worth checking out for that alone, let alone all of the other stuff that he's got on his channel as well. Now he also has a children's book that he's working on, an art book called Little, that you should really go check it out because it kind of encompasses this style that he has developed all of these years, this iconic style that he's got to his particular art. It costs you only pennies to go and support this amazing project and help push his artwork forward. Being a father of three kids, I read children's stories to my kids as often as I possibly can. And one of the things that really gets on my nerves is the fact that quality children's content is hard to find. 99% of the time I read Robert Munch books to my kids and a few other authors that I really, really like, but Will Terry's books falls into both the visual and literal category of the kind of stuff I wish my kids could read more. So if you're somebody who's got children as well, it's worth supporting his project because, because we need to see more and more quality work like his on the shelves. Definitely go check him out. Me. Oh my God, me, that, see, watch, watch this. It's tracking on her face and not mine. I'm so insulted. It's totally tracking her face instead of the camera's face. It's not me. 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 No hair. Here, the blocker. I have to do this. <laughs> to do this so, so that it actually falls. I know she's pretty, all right? Just relax, camera. Anyway, next artist on my list is a fellow Canadian. And that's Jonathan Rector. He's a comic book artist who's been at the YouTube game. Jeez. 
as long as I've been alive. Eight years. Imagine that. I was just a little pup eight years ago, or so I wish. <laughs> but uh, he's a hugely celebrated comic book artist who's incredibly talented. And again, another artist who just shares tons and tons and tons of content. I mean, you go back eight years. I remember when I first discovered him a long time ago and some of his earliest content, I think he's still working on pencil and paper and you could watch how he actually makes that transition between different operating systems and different mediums. And as his channel progresses forward and the whole time he's sharing his process, he's sharing his experience. He has kind of like art talk vlogs, more podcast style. Uh, called Scribble Chat that he's been doing for a long time, where again, he talks about the industry, he talks about his experience, he shares wisdom, he shares knowledge with his audience, and there's tons of them out there. So there's a lot of stuff there worth checking out. He's also got a Patreon to help support his artistic addiction that he shares with everybody else, which of course is completely worth supporting because of how much he shares with the community. It's almost insane how much he gives away to the community. So the fact that you can just offer him some kind of support, holy shit, go do it. Now, one of the skills that you're gonna gain from watching a lot of his stuff isn't only digital painting in general, but it's inking. Because he comes from the graphic novel, comic book side of the planet, as far as art goes, he has really mastered a beautiful skill with the line, how to render line, how to render form using line art, which is in most digital painters vocabulary, not something that they necessarily dedicate a lot of energy to. Jonathan is an example of where you end up professionally if you don't give up the line art game. He's good. So yes, fellow Canadian, badass artist, absolutely hugely generous online artist who shares all of his knowledge, who has been doing for almost a decade now. For everything that he shares, he definitely deserves us to share it back in return. So go show the guy some love. Now the last artist on my list, for today, because God only knows how many of these I'm gonna be producing moving forward, um, isn't only a great illustrator who produces a lot of art tutorials and a lot of technical art tutorials as well, but is also somebody who I smacked myself in the head for not mentioning in my earlier behind the scenes episode because of the amazing art tech reviews that he does for digital painters. And I mentioned three artists, namely Aaron Rutten and Darkin and somebody else there again. I'm gonna smack myself again because I'm having another brain freeze. But I didn't mention Brad Colbo, who's got tons of videos out there. And he's one of my go-to number one guys I go for art tech reviews for digital painters. Now what makes him stand out from the pack? He really goes out of his way to know the tech, to understand the specs of these different types of tech, to produce quality videos on this kind of stuff, really covering all of those aspects, both artistically and technically, that artists like you and I, digital painters, really rely on when we're looking to spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on these products. So that in and of itself is reason enough to go and check him out. But another reason why I love his work is because he takes a very technical approach to online teaching. He teaches a lot of techniques using Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or whatever the case might be from a very illustrator's perspective that really help to advance and speed up the efficiency and quality of your work technically, not just artistically. So he teaches the tools, he teaches different shortcuts, he has all these different kinds of cool tricks that really help you to master the software, not only the artistic side of things. Brad Colbo is strictly a YouTube guy. He puts all of his stuff out there. Now, the other thing about Brad Colbo is that he doesn't only produce art stuff, but he does a lot of vlogging, like my art talks, for instance. He has tons and tons of videos where he talks about his industry experience, where he shares his knowledge, he shares different techniques, he shares perspectives, professionally, personally, artistically, psychologically, whatever, anything and everything that has to do with art and art-related things. So there is such a well of wonderful content out there for you to go and check out. He's definitely something that, he's definitely somebody you wanna be subscribed to for one of many different reasons. So you owe it to yourself to show Brad Colbo your love and support and go and hit that subscribe button. So thank you very much for joining me in this week's episode of Behind the Scenes. And thank you as well for all of the love and support you've showed me for this particular series where I talk about artists and YouTubers online and stuff like that, that, that you love. Thank you for all of your feedback. I would love to produce more videos like this. So of course, if you know of any YouTubers or online artists that you feel deserve support, please let me know in the comments below. Please do take note of something very important. The artists who I support and who I want to promote on my channel are not only artists that have a lot of fame and popularity. I want to be able to promote any artist that I feel really deserves our support. So the number of subscribers, 
the amount of popularity, the amount of money that this person makes, the number of studios that this artist has worked for is not in and of itself reason for me to support an artist. Because these videos take so long for me to produce, I wanna make sure that the people that I support on my channel are artists that have already made an effort to provide a lot of quality content to their viewers. And with that said, remember I have my online art mentorship, Lucid Pixel, you can check out all of the information below. The Brush Sauce Theater that comes out once a month with myself and Tyler Edlin, an amazing art competition online on YouTube, as well as my art talks, which come out once a month, and my behind the scenes episodes, like this one that come out every single Monday. All right, so thank you very much for joining me everybody and happy painting. Take care.